Good morning, children. How's it going? So as we approach the beginning of our first unit, it's important that we keep in mind just exactly how we question a text and the components of that text that we need to look at in order to do that effectively. There are all of these different components of text that we need to be mindful of in order for us to have the f uh, fullest, most complete, most salient interpretation possible. So today we're thinking about questioning a text and we're going to discuss the methods by which we deeply interrogate a text and the components of a text necessary to consider for meaningful analysis. So the thing that we have to remember is that you must be a detective. Okay, you must, must, must be searching for clues, for ideas. You must overturn rocks. You must look in every corner. You have to actively be interrogating a text. Now, what are we looking at in terms of the components necessary for this deep, deep analysis? Well, those are audience, form, purpose, and context. First, context, really crucial. The things we need to really think about before we even dive into the text is, what do we already know about the creator of the text? Although sometimes we can completely separate the creator from what is created, having that contextual information about who they are, what they've done, what they believe, all of these different components are really, really, really going to make our analysis much smoother and more fully developed. We also have to consider what we know about the time or place the text was created or revised. Something that is created in 2020 comes out of very different circumstances than something that was created in something like 1820. We have to keep that context in mind because context affects the ideas within the piece. Then we have to ask ourselves, all right, how are these things relevant for interpretation? In what ways does the time period or the creator affect the piece? Does it have something to do with the specific style it uses, the themes or concepts it focuses on? Okay, and remember, you always need evidence to support these interpretations. That's where our detective skills come again. You've got to get in there and dig around. Now, when we're describing the context, we should think of a few things. First, the creator of the text. So for that, we're considering age, race, gender, their socioeconomic status, what faith they have, political views, really anything that affects belief or lifestyle or anything like that. We're also considering the historical context of the text. So what year was it created? And then what was going on at the time? Was it during the Great Depression or the bubonic plague? What was the social climate? In what direction did people generally move socially? What were the shared values of that society? And then finally, the cultural context. Where was the text created and what was happening there? So something that is created in one place, okay, has a very different set of circumstances than something that's created in a completely different culture with a different set of values or understanding of the world. What was the social climate of that place? Okay, how are their values aligned with their actual geographic area? Now, how do you find this stuff out? Well, you need to use context. You need to use that evidence within it. Things like captions, images, you know, the style will help you figure it out, the techniques that are being used, the kind of language. Slang in particular is really useful. The year it was produced, and again, the place of production. Next, we have audience. Now, this one's very, very important. We have to ask, for whom is this text intended? Who is meant to be reading this? And then, is the text meaning dependent on that particular audience? Is it going to be more difficult for one audience to understand this than another? Is it being phrased in a specific way so that an audience can understand it most easily? And finally, how has this text been designed to reach its audience? What has the creator, the writer, the artist, whoever they might be, what have they done to specifically appeal to that audience? What have they included or not included in the piece to make it work for that audience. Now, if we're describing the audience, we want to think about things like age, gender, race, socioeconomic status, education level, their knowledge of whatever is being discussed, their political background, religion. There are tons and tons and tons of others. There are many, many, many different permutations of an audience. 
again, the evidence that helps us understand who the audience is, things like the images, the form, the language, the word choice is very telling, the delivery, the way the message is distributed. Next is form. So we have to ask, what are the conventions of this text type? Now, is this an example typical or atypical? So is this usual for the style or unusual for the style, usual for the context, unusual for the context, etc. We want to ask how the text uses language, how it uses images, and then we want to look at things like allusions or references. What does this text connect to? Okay, what other texts does it make a relationship with? When we're describing the form, we're thinking about the text type. Is it a novel? Is it a painting? Is it a film? We want to look at the image itself, things like color, design, lines, symbols, fonts, caricatures. We want to think about the language being used, that's the word choice or diction, the connotation, the style being used, those devices and techniques, the figurative language, for example. And then to find evidence of that form, again, we're looking at the text type. So we're thinking about, okay, we're looking at branding, we're looking at any commercial associations, the specific author, the purpose. We're thinking about images being used. Again, we're looking at the language itself. And again, the delivery. So is it a text or is it an image? Where is it being distributed in a magazine or in a book or in some other capacity online, perhaps? Okay. So something to keep in mind when we're describing form. You need to use highly descriptive details. Adjectives are your friends here. Use descriptive language. You're going to want to look at every element of the text. So you want to break up all the unique parts and look at those individually and then put them together. And you want to choose the most relevant for the argument you plan to make and connect to uh, your purpose. You don't want to select the portions of form that have nothing to do with your argument or your ideas to support your argument or ideas. That's completely silly. You don't have to talk about every single element in order to make this happen, but you have to make sure you're talking about the relevant elements. Finally, purpose. So we're asking, what is the text purpose? Do we know or can we guess? And then, really importantly here, we're offering some critique. Why or why not is the text effective in achieving its purpose? Does it work? Does it do what it's trying to do? When we're describing the purpose, we have to think in terms of the broad purpose, meaning is it meant to teach us something, to convince us of something, or to keep us entertained? And then the more specific purpose. Now, the specific purpose is the actual message it's trying to get across, okay? The central message of the piece, the idea it wants us to understand. When we look for evidence, we're putting all the other pieces together, the context, the audience, and the form. All of those different pieces, when looked at side by side, will help us understand exactly what the writer, the artist, the speaker, the writer, was trying to accomplish. All right. So that's going to be it for our basic notes here. Please feel free to go back and watch this again to grab the rest of your notes. We've got a quick little awe activity. We will be seeing you guys soon. Have a great day.